So there's someone there, mm -hmm. 20 years old, they've got five grand, it's taken them a year to save that five grand. There's a course there, 3,000 pounds to join this course. Should they do it? I need a yes or no. <laughs> hey guys, what's going on? I've got an exciting day today. I'm just in London, got here, arrived last night, I came from Dubai and stayed in the Radisson Hotel. Radisson Red? It was okay, it was okay, but it was nothing special. Later, I'm actually gonna go and meet with Property by Kazi. If you're not checked out his channel, then click in the link in the description. Check out his channel, Property by Kazi. And yeah, I'm just gonna film some content. Remember, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you all in a bit. Got the local gap, get the local fry, the local cappuccino, the breads, the humus, the cook. Bats and meal with Kazi at one of the developments, one of his developments. So guys, stay tuned. Remember, like and subscribe. What's going on everyone? We're here today with Property by Kazi. So thank you so much for joining us today. And um, you know, one of your lovely developments right here. Looks really good. Thank you, thank you, thank you for having me on. If you could just introduce yourself, that'd be great. Yeah, so I'm Kaz or Kazi from Property by Kazi. I'm a property developer. Um, focus on doing flips, mainly flips at the moment, but I've done a little bit of everything. Done some BRR, done HMOs, done rent to rent, done rent to SA, I've done loft space developments, new builds. This year I'm, I've done luxury homes as well, so million pound plus refurbs. So a little bit of everything in the property space. Yeah, and we're actually in one of your developments right now. Yes, this is this is the development I like. Yeah. Nice one. We're so using nice. a temporary podcast studio because yeah. you've got to manage those expenses. Yeah. And I just noticed everything built in. Like there's no like snagging. You can see everything is like proper done done. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm a mad stickler for yeah. detail. When it comes, like I'll wind up the trades at the end, but it just has yeah. to be done just right. Yeah, that's great. So I think one kind of question everyone's probably thinking is. How did you actually get started in property? So that the short answer is I started a shisha business. Mm -hmm. Shisha, massive margins. Like we're talking thousand percent black plus at the time I was doing it, sort of two thousand and twelve, okay. maybe a little bit earlier than that. I'm a big I'm, shisha fan. I love shisha. I've heard. We have to. We're gonna have to yeah. go fresh. We're, we're gonna do, do, do shisha diaries on the yeah. vlog, right? <laughs> gonna pick the best yeah. flavors but yeah so that was my thing and i was like that like i had shisha for the first time mm -hmm. and it was like a it like like side note it's unhealthy xyz yeah. not like promoting it however from a social aspect it was like it's something you can do with your friends where yeah. you talk because you, you go to cinema with people yeah it's like oh, you don't you don't speak to them like bowling just bowling whereas it was it was yeah. social and i liked it so started that business fast forward like Got my own venue, fast forward, was working at like festivals and the biggest clubs in the country, amazing, business going great, built some capital. And you know, you just start, you love a business, you can fall out of love a business, but it doesn't mean you don't learn a lot from it and mm -hmm. took that capital, invested in my first project. First project was a flip, mm -hmm. um, auction purchase, housing association, one bedroom flat, refurb, some internal reconfiguration. Mm -hmm. That was like my proof of concept, made some money, made a couple of little mistakes um, but the main thing was that we made money and said look this is me I'm gonna go again I love this I caught the property bug and eight years on I'm still here basically today I'm gonna ask you Kazi for your top tips for brand new property people what is your top tips so if, if you want to get into property you're just starting out I think spoken about this on countless 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 different different opportunities and different podcasts but just to say that there's so much free information out there right now like whether it be youtube instagram tiktok clubhouse etc you name it like facebook groups there's so much information out there so many people that have been doing it for years there's hundreds of collective years of experience that you can go and benefit from so i would say go and follow a load of great people and indulge in property, find a specific strategy that you want. But also, when you're looking at property, you need to know what you want to get out of property. Because if you're looking to get capital appreciation, rent to rent's not for you. And if potentially, if you're looking at income, maybe, you know, income as a return on investment, maybe the vanilla buy to nets are not for you, and maybe rent to rent is more for you. So find a strategy that works for you 
and try and increase your knowledge as much as possible and work out what it is that you don't know. Because it's only when you know what you don't know, yeah. you then know that maybe now's the time to maybe pay for some education, ask those specific questions, whether that be getting a mentor, whether that be doing some courses, they could be all different types of things. But I think until you know what you don't know, you shouldn't part with any money. Yeah. Okay, so say there's, a, there's an 18 year old out there, they want to get started in property. What would you say their first deal should be? I mean, now the thing is, the reality is everybody's circumstance is different because there can be an 18 year old that just signed for Chelsea and there can be an 18 year old that, you know, just lost their job. So really your personal circumstance is going to be dependent on what you should do next. Okay. Like there's, there's things in property that have lower barriers to entry. So they might be deal sourcing, they might be rent to rent. And although like, there's, there's different good and bad sides of all different types of property, one thing I like about both of those areas is that what they do are they are that stepping stone for relationships. Because if you start doing rent to rent and you manage a landlord's property amazingly for a period, when you now start to want to maybe build an investor list, that's somebody that you've got a warm relationship with. Same with deal sourcing. If you've been the person that's been that go-to person to find a load of good deals, when you now want to raise money to do your own deal or a JV, because you've built that personal track record and that credit within the industry of associated parties, you can now find people a lot easier because they're warm leads, they're not cold leads. Okay, okay. And then, say if you had to, say there was an 18 year old person there, he wanted to get started in property, um, what would you say his free top learning tools should be? And be specific. We need we need to know specifics. When you when you say learning tools, what, what do yeah. you mean by learning? Tools? So this could be YouTube podcasts. Do you know what's so crazy? Because again, I start to feel like I'm getting older yeah. to the point where the people that I would have learned from yeah. are not even teaching or not even in the space anymore. And to be honest, I've always been a super active learner. The way I've learned is by getting down to the site, maybe working as a labourer, going out there and doing it. And I'm not being on site as a labourer because that's what I want to do, yeah. but I'm immersing myself in the property development culture mm. to the point that I'm seeing what it takes to take a building from A to Z. I'm yeah. seeing the problems that the owner had with the electrician and the, the, the plumber and the joiner. And I'm seeing, maybe, I'm having conversations with the developer about what their issues with finance and why they didn't go up a level or down a level, but you're learning on somebody else's dime, but you've put yourself in a position to be able to take in that information. Yeah. So for me, actually really immersing yourself in the property space is, is something that I would give as like one of my go-tos. I can't necessarily think of specific people. Mm -hmm. um, I can touch on a few that, like not to say that I would say go and follow everything they do, yeah. but they've done some amazing things. Um, you've got brighter investments, they're just, they're, they're really positive, they've got site days, we can go down to their sites yeah. and they do it for under 20 year olds, go and see what it takes to take a building from maybe nothing, maybe a hole in the ground yeah. to a block of eight flats or converting a bank into six flats yeah. and they're really open and let people come down. Um, Ted from Ted Talks, he does a lot of good days where he'll let people come in and he will take them through maybe a back to brick refurb. Yeah. And he will explain how to manage a build. Mm. So what are the costs of this type of thing? These site days, do you know roughly? I mean, I know um, Brighter Investments ones, I know they're free, but they're okay. strictly for people under the age of 20. Okay. I want to say Tedgy's ones are around 150 pound mark. Okay, so it's reasonable for the day. They're reasonable and it's mm. also a case of it's not 300 people in a room yeah. like you're going to get one-on-one -on -one time and attention with yeah. them to be able to ask the questions mm -hmm. and even if you're not that confident and you feel that you know a lot of the time people are going to ask the questions that you want to ask because a lot of the people that go down there are in a similar position to you mm -hmm. um you've got people like alfred alfred jade yeah. he does hmo conversions in coventry mm -hmm. and he runs a mastermind and like a mastermind is a good way of having people that want to, that around you that want to do similar things or are doing similar things that you're doing but creating that accountability with a kind of hive structure where you know you're all doing the same thing yeah we're all asking the same questions and the idea of you know if if there's five of you in a group there's me you two other people mm. and then they go away and say okay look this week you've got to go and put in offers on 10 different properties mm. and the other four come back us four all come back and say we've done it yeah. and you didn't do it 
it creates a lot more accountability. So I definitely think having somebody that's going to hold you accountable and properly is important as well. Okay, what would you say about education, training courses, that type of thing? Do you think training courses are a good idea for new property people? I think, I think training courses are a good idea, like because you need to learn. That being said, I also think there's a load of free information out there, so you don't necessarily need that training course. Yeah. And I think there's a, there's a weird balance, it sounds like I'm sitting on the fence, but what I mean by that is, there's a load of information out there if you think I want to spend all the time to go and get it. But what a lot of training courses do is they streamline that information to you directly and you pay for that delivery of a service. But there's loads of different types of training courses. There's training courses that are very much like be on your chest, Wolf of Wall Street, let's get you motivated. Then there's training courses that are like, you know, very specific and niche, mm -hmm. like down to details and giving you um, scripts and okay. guides and, you know, like, um, Excel documents to help you manage the costing. And then there's training courses that are more like mentors and there's a lot more hand-holding and like having a soundboard and day-to-day -day response. But I think if you are gonna go down the education route, you've got to find a training course that's fit for purpose. So, and when, what I mean by that is, you will have a type of learning that works for you yeah. or a type of motivation that works for you. Mm -hmm. And there's no point if you that like detail going to give the person that's going to give you hard grunt cordon style motivation yeah. it's just not going to work for you mm -hmm. the the other side of it is you know that a training course is only a course yeah. and however it's pitched that there is responsibility on the people selling those training courses to pitch them and not oversell and under deliver mm -hmm. but however the course is pitched you should know day one like any type of education is not a guarantee of money. Somebody can give you all of the information, but it's still your job to take that information and deliver it to go and make money from it. Okay. Like training courses aren't a get rich quick scheme. They don't guarantee that you make money. Yeah. You still have to put in the graft, the grind, the blood, the sweat, the tears, all of the work to yeah. get that financial remuneration and a return out of that course. Okay, so there's someone there, 20 mm -hmm. years old, they've got five grand, it's taken them a year to save that five grand. They go on a training course, mm -hmm. that's free, and there's a course there, 3,000 pounds to join this course. Should they do it? I need a yes or no. <laughs> it's personal, because like, do you know the thing is, like, I've spoke to Alfred. Yeah. You, you know Alfred, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alfred has spent over forty-five thousand pounds on property education. Damn. For it, like he could genuinely yeah. buy a house mortgage-free of what he spent. Yeah. Alfred has also, off the back of that property education, yeah. raised over a million pounds in private equity in eighteen months. Yeah. He's built a portfolio of I think five or six properties, yeah. yielding fifteen hundred pounds a month. All of that he wouldn't have without the education. Yeah. However, there's also people that have gone on education taking a year to save the whole 5,000, not even just the 3,000, the whole 5,000, spent 3,000 pounds of it, and, or 5,000 pounds of it, yeah. and had nothing to show for it in two years' time. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying, I can't turn around and say, do it, don't do it. Mm -hmm. like, but within any education, you should have done your due diligence, mm -hmm. look at the reviews, look at what other people have got out of it, speak to people that have been on the course. Okay. Like, if, if you're gonna go and, go to a university, you're gonna go down to the open days. Yeah. You're gonna to speak to friends and family that have been there before. You're gonna work out what it is they got out of it. Mm. You're not just gonna see something online and say, oh, go to Bruno University and say, oh, someone said go there, go there. Mm. Like, you are just as responsible for the course that you attend okay. as that what the course gives you. Now, don't, if the course is rubbish, then like, maybe, I don't know, maybe yeah. you're supposed to get your money back. Okay, so for a new person, um, there's lots of new people that might be watching this today. Yeah. They're brand new, they don't own any property, they don't have any deals, they don't have any rent to rent or anything. If you had to choose one for a new person, would you say they should buy something or do rent to rent? You said they don't have any money, right? How are you going to buy something with no money? But should they be looking to, to, to do that or that? Like I went, like personally, I bought before doing rent to rent and then went and did rent to rent afterwards. Mm -hmm. And I've seen success in both. Like, but I've seen success in both. Yeah. Like I've seen people that have genuinely like I interviewed Stephanie Taylor mm -hmm. 
she didn't get into property till she was 45. Mm. She got into rent to rent. She built a portfolio and now she's buying blocks of apartments off the back of her rent to rent income. Okay. I've seen people that have done the other thing and they've done developments. They started to do developments and realized, okay, I'm making a load of money now, but I don't have any income and I need rent to rent. Mm. So that it, it mad sound like people are going to watch this and think, he doesn't give an opinion <laughs> on anything. But like, it's yeah. like the concept of, Oh, should you buy properties in your own name or a company name? Yeah. There's not a right answer to that because it's personal circumstance led. And if I was yeah. to turn around and say it's one size fits all, yeah. you should do rent to rent, you should do deal sourcing, mm. you should do this. Like I'd be lying because it yeah. depends. Like what if, for example, you're you're that you're great at finding deals, like you're great at finding deals that work and stack and you're great at raising finance, you should probably get into like trying to do a JV with somebody or something. But what if you're great at pitching yourself to agents and sourcing properties for rent to rent? You, sh you should play to your strengths. Because yeah. if I'm saying as a 20 year old, like work out what you don't know. Okay. Work out what you're good at. Do a SWOT analysis of yourself. Work out what your strengths are, what you want out of life yeah. and how your strategies, sorry, how your strengths pay into mm -hmm. your strategy, play into your strategies okay. and find something that's going to streamline your journey and your trajectory into achieving your goals yeah. as quickly as possible. Okay, so let's say mindset tips now, mm. right? What are your top mindset tips for brand new property people? I think my, my mindset tips are like, they're the same for whether you're a property person, like, you know, a, a, any type of business entrepreneurial person. So success tips from Kazi. Yeah. You're like, hearing it first here, guys. So. Like we live in like this Instagram world. Mm -hmm. Like, and by that I mean the social media world where all we see are everybody's wins and everything looks amazing. And we've got this, like we're socially conditioned to need everything now mm -hmm. because we're in this crazy point in time where you see what everybody's doing. Mm -hmm. You see, like the success of everybody. But everybody only puts like their, their, their smiley face on the, the, the nice things that they're doing. And I think one, one piece of advice I would give is you're always running your own race. You're always in your own lane. Like what success and like means to you is completely different to the, what it means to somebody else. So just focus on you and your journey. Like set yourself micro goals because you might have these massive goals that you want to like, be a millionaire, a billionaire, whatever you want to do, and that's great. But it's really easy to get almost demotivated when you're seeing like, you know, all of these nice things on social media yeah. and that you, you forget to enjoy the success that you're having because you're always looking at all these great things yeah. everybody else has done. Yeah. So like, set yourself the massive goals, but also set yourself smaller achievable goals and actually take the time to pat yeah. yourself on the back when you achieve them. So, if you want to buy a house, mm. that's a big goal. But then if you were in debt 2K mm -hmm. six months ago and you get out of debt, you get your balance to zero. Mm. Somebody else, zero for them is rock bottom. But for you, zero is a massive step up. So yeah. just look at your own personal circumstance and like applaud yourself. Keep having these micro achievable goals. So at the end of the day, at the end of a week, at the end of a month, you can look at yourself in the mirror and say, like, I've done something today. Yeah. I've done something this month. Thank you for watching guys. Now remember, click in the link in the description and you can find Kazi's channel. Go over there and remember to like and subscribe and stay tuned for some more content.